All right. So paid media. So I was going to like create some slides and I'm like, no, Google, Google it. And I came across this site and I thought it was great because it was, it's fairly new. It's this January of 2020. And it's, it's basically, there's like a cheat sheet too. And I'm going to share this URL so that you guys can download this, but it does, it does give a quick definitions of paid media. Now remember paid media is all paid for, right? You pay to, to do an advertisement on television. You pay a lot of money for the, you know, Super Bowl commercials. You pay money for out of home advertising, the billboards, buses, bus stops. You pay when you go to like, you read a, a, an article on Forbes, there's like banners everywhere and videos, all that is paid for. Now I want to just talk through a couple of these. And this is actually, I agree with how they categorize this. There's kind of like digitally, there's three kind of ways to think about this, right? There's paid search which is which is cost per click or pay-per-click advertising we're going to talk about search at a different day there's paid social which is we're going to cover that tonight we're going to i'm going to actually walk through facebook on the back end to show you how you would build an audience and build an ad and by the way that also accounts for instagram too so you can do the same thing for either or in on the facebook ad platform then there's display so that is there's what's called a DSP, which is basically kind of like this network of, uh, uh, it's like an ad server database that serves ads to multitude of websites on the internet. Google has one called the Google Display Network, which, uh, you know, if you have a, an AdWords account already, you can buy uh, media through display advertising through their partners. Okay. And that's a lot, hundreds and thousands of websites. So the distinction here is that there's three main types of kind of advertising on digital. This doesn't include like commercials, right? This doesn't include, you know, television advertising or, um, you know, out of home advertising, which are billboards and things like that, or even like the Goodyear blimp, right? As an example is of advertising. So a couple of definitions. Now this is important that you know this, even if you do not plan on going into advertising, some of you are advertising students. Okay. So, or majored, majoring in advertising. So you need to know this, whether you're, I know that I think, um, who's the uh, majoring in like the business side of, of advertising? Like if you ever get in, are running sales for an agency and you know, your, your management and you're talking to clients, like you need to know these examples. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk through a few of these. Um, cost per action, it's, um, it's kind of like a conversion, right? An action could be anything. It could be a lead, it could be even a sale, but if it was a sale, you wouldn't call it a cost per action. You'd say it, you'd say a sale. Um, and the, the math behind it is actually very easy. And what's great about, about this, and you don't necessarily have to know math when you're, when you're managing paid media, because if you're doing it within the back end of Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Google, all that, all of this is calculated for you, right? It's all calculated in their reporting dashboard and you can download it and, and, and do it that way. Um, so this is like the basics, right? You spend a thousand dollars to acquire 10 sales. Well, you divide 10 into 1000 and what do you get? A hundred dollars, right? And that is, that is how much each action costs you. Again, action could be anything. It could be what, I mean, again, you call it something different, but as an example, downloading a white paper, when somebody fills out the form, clicks download, you know, that is then considered an action. Uh, or a lead. So a a acquisition, action, lead, those are all kind of used synonymously, depending upon the type of advertising you're doing, right? So CPA, cost per, I was saying action, but it's acquisition, but I've also referred to it as action as well, because it is an action that you want a consumer to take. Cost per click is a lot different. So cost per click is determined based on the network that you're buying media in. So when you go to Google and you type in you know, computer under $600 or laptop, um, you know, under $600 or cheap laptop or black laptop or pink laptop or laptop with, you know, a Mac, what have you, you're going to see a bunch of ads, right? And all of those companies that are buying ads on the, 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 the search results in Google, they're all paying Google every time somebody clicks on that ad. And it's basically a model on the back end where it's, it's, um, what do you call it? It's like an auction, right? So it, it goes to the highest bidder. In other words, it's, it's all, it's all bidding. So if Microsoft is paying a hundred dollars a click for those keywords there and, and no other 
competitor is going to you know, pay $100, well, then Microsoft is always going to be at the top, right? But let's just say Apple says, well, you know what? I'm going to pay $110 a click. So you don't necessarily know what the other competitors are spending, but the platform will tell you based on your bid, this is going to be your average position. And it's all based on demand. Right? It's, not, it's not based on what Google says is what they want to charge you. It's basically saying, based on everybody else who's bidding on these keywords, this is how much you need to bid on in order to get this result in Google. Okay? And it's the same thing for other types of uh, you know, paid social, like on Facebook. You can determine whether you want uh, to do a, a CPC model or a CPM model cost per click or cost per thousand. We'll talk about that in a minute, right? So if you want to drive people to your website, you might decide to do a cost per click model because you can optimize that so that you're only paying for clicks, right? Every time you show up on an ad, it's, it's, it's a great impression. It's great to get more visibility, but you're only paying the platform if somebody clicks on it. Whereas if you're doing kind of like an awareness campaign, like a brand awareness campaign, you might decide that, you know what, I want to optimize, I want to reach as many people as possible. So I'm going to go for more of a CPM model um, in order to do that. Okay. So a click-through rate, a click-through rate is basically it's a percentage, right? It's, you know, you have a thousand views and a hundred people of those, a hundred of those views or people clicked through. Well, then your conversion rate is, or your click-through rate rather is 10%. Now, depending upon like where you, you know, what industry you work in or even the time of year, because as we head up to like, you know, Amazon Prime Day is right around the corner, you know, Black Friday is right around the corner, you know, and a lot of these advertisers, Amazon and others are going to push product and they're going to, you know, so you're going to see cost per click and click, you're going to see cost per click numbers go up, but then you're going to see, you know, your click through rates might be higher right before back to school or, you know, graduation, or, you know, if you're selling flowers, you know, maybe your, your click-through rates will go up, to, you know, right before or leading up to Valentine's Day. So it kind of depends upon the factors that are happening in the world. Um, and so click-through rate is something that, you know, again, it's hard to say like what the average is because it just depends. I've seen from a technology standpoint, you know, a 2% click-through rate is, is, you know, between two and two and a half percent is pretty decent. Um, so, Again, there's a lot of data out there. If you Google it, like what's the average click-through rate for fashion? You can use that as a benchmark to say, you know what, we're going to try to achieve at least 3% click-through rate on this ad. Okay, so that's, that's what that is. A conversion rate is very similar to that of a, um, a cost per acquisition. It's the same math, right? It's just a different way of thinking about it. A conversion is a sale. A conversion is a downloading of a white paper. A conversion is completing a form. A conversion is anything that you specify what a conversion is. It's not a click-through rate though, right? Because the, the, the platforms aren't going to report on something unless you create a conversion rate in the back end or an action in the back end that says, when this person gets to my website and when they click on this link and when they fill out their name and email address and click submit, then that once it goes through, it then becomes a conversion. Now, a lot of times when, you know, somebody has bad internet or <clears throat> maybe the website takes a long time to, to load, you know, they could start the process of conversions, right? And, and converting, they can go to the website, they can click. Remember that example that I showed you last week on Slack, how they want you to attend an event. That is a conversion. The minute that you sign up to attend, that is considered a conversion or it could be considered an action or an acquisition. So, but remember what happened was we clicked on the ad from LinkedIn we went to the landing page and then there was still some confusion on my part. Well, okay, where do I fill out my name? Oh no, I got to click on another link that takes me to the page where then I fill out my information. So that little step right there probably affects conversion rate. I guarantee it does because as a marketer, you want to make it as easy as possible for people to submit information to you. That's why you can do it directly on LinkedIn. Right. When, remember I showed you when we clicked on that download button, a little pop-up came on my feed. Do you want, is this the right email address, your name, submit, boom, done. Now that company has your email address. Okay. I'm going to skip some of these because I think these are just a little bit more complex. Um, let's go down to clicks. Okay. Clicks, pretty self-explanatory, right? A click, but 
Let me ask a question to everybody here. Does everybody know what a unique visitor is like to a website? Um, it's the, it's a user who's first time it's who's the first time visiting and it's not counted again. So it has to be a new user every time. Kind of. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a, there's called unique users and then there's returning users or just total users. Whereas if I go to, if I Google best laptop and I go to Lenovo.com, then Lenovo, basically they're going to have analytics that say, Oh, there was someone who typed in Lenovo or best laptop and then went to our website. And then what did they do? Right. So there's something called Google analytics. Okay. This is all, again, this is all baseline information, right? We're not going to go into the depth of, of how to create reports in Google analytics, but you need to understand what it is. Google analytics, Adobe analytics used to be called site catalyst back in the day. It was called Omniture. Basically it's, it's analytics that gives you information about the people coming to your website. Okay. So if any of you have a, a one of those websites built using Squarespace or something like WordPress, a lot of these times they have like built-in analytics that'll tell you that. They'll tell you, oh, on Monday you got 20 unique visitors. On Tuesday you got a thousand. What the heck happened, right? So a lot of these larger companies will optimize those websites to make sure that you're not just getting as many clicks as possible. We're going to talk about SEO in the future and how to optimize to get more clicks through Google. But you know, how do you keep them on your site? Right. So again, that Slack example, very, very bad customer experience in my opinion. Right. I would have had that form on the first page. And what did we do when I showed you that form or when I, when I clicked to it and then I had to click again, I just backed out. Right. I didn't go any further. That is called an abandon rate. Right. Um, and you can see what a cart abandon rate here is. And I'll talk about that in a second. So clicks, measuring clicks, measuring page views. Now something to consider here is a click doesn't always equate to a unique visitor. Okay. So for example, I have an ad in Facebook. I am trying to drive traffic to my, 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 my website. And let's say for example, over the course of a campaign, I generated a thousand clicks to my website. Then I go to analytics and I say, okay, well, how many visitors did I get from Facebook? Well, you know that, and I can create unique URLs so that I can track exactly the ad. How many actually unique visitors did I get um, from that ad? And it might say 60 or 40. It should never be more than what, you know, what your clicks say. But can anybody tell me why they would think that a click wouldn't necessarily equate to a unique visitor? Um, doesn't it? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I wanted to say like maybe because um, when they click on it, they may not per se like stay on it. So they're not really counted as um, seeing the site or ad. Yeah, that's a great, that's exactly what it is. Because some sites, have you ever gone to a website and it takes like forever to load? You're like, and it could be your internet connection or it could be their website. So I don't know about you, but I have a very short attention span. So if the site doesn't load within like a half a second or a, you know one and a half seconds, I just X out or back, click the back button. And that would be a situation where I clicked on it from Facebook. It takes me to their website. It's taking forever. I just not, you know, to, to load, I, you know, exit out of it or back out. Then that would mean it wouldn't necessarily count as a unique visitor or a click on the back end from web analytics. So that's, a, that's exactly right. Um, CPM. Many people still think it's cost per thousand or, you know, cost per million rather. Um, it's not, it's cost per thousand impressions. Okay. So uh, LinkedIn is a, is a great example of a platform that has very high CPMs. You know, you could pay anywhere between five and $10 CPM, meaning you can say, okay, that, well, based on your audience, you know, they're going to tell you and they'll, they'll tell you before you click submit and, and your, add your credit card. Okay. Based on your budget of a thousand dollars, and based on your targeting parameters, you know, you want to target C-suite executives who work for these companies, you know, um, and because you're competing with ad space from other people, just like cost per clicks go up, so does CPM. Okay, so CPM, they may say your average CPM is going to be $5.65. That just simply means that, you know, your, your budget, is, that's how it's going to break down. For every thousand impressions that your ad shows up on somebody's browser, 
you were going to get charged five dollars and sixty cents. That's a high CPM. Five dollars, five, anything. That's very high, but that's kind of expected. Now with Facebook, I mean, you, I have crazy, crazy like data and analytics from Facebook because it's you can get so granular and targeted. You can target like by zip code. You can target by you know lifestyle. So many different ways, and we're going to talk through that. And uh, you know, so that's a again, CPM is cost per thousand. In some platforms, you can determine what you want to pay. I want to I want to pay based on CPM or I want to pay based on CPC. It depends upon what your goals are. Okay, a cart abandon rate is. Has anybody ever gone to? Uh, you know, Amazon, you've added something to your cart and then you left it there. My daughters do that. They just go to Amazon and throw stuff in the cart. And then luckily they don't buy, right? But they say, hey, dad, I got stuff in the cart. And I look in there, it's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, what? You know, but anyway, so have you ever done that? And then you go to Facebook or somewhere else and then you see ads for that same exact product in your feed. Anybody get that? Okay. That is basically a couple of things. Retargeting right? They're retargeting you because they know that you were on Amazon at one point, or you were on, you know, Puma.com or Adidas or Nike or whatever. And, uh, you know, or even eBay, eBay is a great example. They'll actually serve an ad to you of the same exact product, either in your shopping cart or something that you viewed because abandon rate, right? People, people don't now, now with Amazon, they probably have a very low abandon rate because it's so easy to buy. And that's one reason why they launched the one click buy. I think it's called one click buy. It's a little yellow button. You literally click on it and it, it's done. You don't have to go through shipping address and you know, your credit card number. You click one click, you, you click buy and it's gone, it's done. It's literally one click sale. But other companies, it's like, okay, what's your name next? What's your you know, address next? Is your billing address same as your home address? Next, what's your credit card number? Next, what's your passcode? And that's like 15 minutes of filling information out. And if you don't have like Google Chrome where everything's stored and it just kind of populates for you, I do that. And you're kind of doing it yourself and maybe you got the zip code wrong and you click submit and it doesn't go through. And you're like, oh, forget this. You, you leave, you just exit out or you go back and or you just type in another website. That is an abandon rate, right? And so hopefully somebody on the back end saying, wow, why is our abandon rate at 55%? Meaning 55 people out of, out of 100 who come to our website start the process of buying a product but don't finish. There's a problem, right? And it could be a complicated checkout process as here or just poor design. Like wh where's the click button or where's the buy button? I've seen situations where I could not even find, like I filled out all my, all my information and I could not even look for the purchase, like the actual click to make everything go through. And that's an example of just poor UX, like poor design. Page views is, okay, so if I go to, like I'm on this website right now, right? Can you guys all agree? So I actually Googled, well, let's see, what did I Google? Here we go, paid media glossary, okay? I went to this, and, and look at the, and we're gonna talk about SEO at some point, but I clicked on the first, Result here. Now I am counted as a unique visitor from their to their website, and if they have everything set up correctly, they'll know what I typed in to get to their website. Okay, they can use like Google uh, Search Console or other platforms to do that. And um, now, if I just stay here and then I exit out and I'm and I'm and I'm done, then I I account for one page view because I've only viewed one page. But if I go here and say, oh, what's this REQ? What, let's see, what do they do? Services. Okay, it looks like they're an agency. They have, you know, who's their team? Just some random people. Okay. And now I've been to three pages. So there are three page views. So one unique visitor, me, generated three page views on the back end. So your page views are always going to be astronomically higher, right? You're never going to have equivalent you know, unique visitors to page views, unless may, maybe, but for the most part, you might average one or two page views per visit, right? You know, and there's really no best practice for that. Well, I think there is, I just don't know it. And I'm gonna take a bite. Okay. Is this helpful so far? You got to know this. You have to know this. All right. Bounce rate. 
balance rate is almost is is kind of like it's kind of like a band rate but it's it's more of of a of a percent of visitors that when they go to the one page on your website how many of them like back out and how many like uh, you know either go go somewhere else and and high high bounce rates could be for a lot of things maybe you google something and you don't get the right information and you click on it and you're like that's not what i'm looking for and you click back that's a bounce rate so there are teams of people who work in analytics and like digital analytics who are trying to optimize bounce rate make sure that 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 bounce rate is as low as possible right you want to keep it low my blog for example has like a 65 70% bounce rate that just means 65% of the people who come to my blog only read one page, but it's a blog, right? Now, I've always asked myself, like, should I spend time trying to get people to like read more than one blog? And yes, I just don't have time, right? So with blogs is great because you're creating new pages, you know, day in and day out. And they're, you know, optimized for, you know, social content, they're optimized for SEO. And, you know, hopefully, and I've been getting traffic to different web pages uh, to my site for over 10 years. Uh, and these are like really old blog posts. So that's a bounce rate. A video view rate is um, basically how many people are watching at least three seconds of your video. Okay. So sometimes you can do with other paid media, you can do like video completion rate. So how many actually completed the entire video? I think YouTube, when, when they count a view, you have to watch like a certain, you have a certain threshold. I don't remember what that is. If anybody I think knows, it's 30 seconds. That's what I thought. 30 seconds before it's counted as a view. Okay, so if you ever go to my blog and watch a video, at least stay on for 30 seconds, okay? And then go to another video in 30 seconds. So that is kind of the view rate, right? You, you, what's the, by the way, guys, how much do you think, when you go to YouTube, right, and you see some of these videos, not like the ones that are uploaded by users, but like these company videos, how much money do you think these people are, are, are paying to produce a video? At a, at a, and and maybe, David, maybe you know, like, what do you think it costs to do a professional, highly produced video? Anybody have an idea? Like three to five K. Anybody else? Um, if it's for like an established like pop music group, it'd be like I think millions. You mean like a vi like a video, like a like, you a, like music a music video? video? Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah, because yeah. I'm talking about more like like if you go to if you ever see an ad on um on YouTube, a lot of times there, there, there are different versions of ads we see on TV, like Allstate or Acura or BMW. And they're, they're short 30 second ads. You know, you have to watch like five seconds of it before you skip ad and then go to the video you're looking at. I'm talking about videos like that. So Mateo, you said three to 5K. Anybody else? Um, I say like 50K. 50K? That's a big I, difference. That's huge. I'd say and, probably somewhere between like 15 to 25K. I don't okay. know. Here's, here's the thing. You can get videos like that for, for three to 5K up to, in some cases, 500K to a million dollars. Because if you think about it, you're, if, it's, if it's a little bit more sophisticated and you have people, you have to hire talent, you have to buy props, you have to you know, secure the photographer, you do, you do post pre, you know, pre post production, et cetera. We did a video, I'll show you in a different, a different session um, that cost 150K and it was liter literally a 30 second video that just lived on YouTube. Now we cut it up into smaller pieces and you used it for like, you know, video ads on Facebook, 150K. So videos can get expensive. So I say all this because what's the point of creating a video that costs so much money if people aren't going to watch it? Okay, and that's how you get some of that data, view, a view rate. The attribution is interesting. So let me ask you a question. Has anybody here ever seen an ad on television or seen an ad on the, you know, 101 or 280 or 680 or the freeway or a bus stop at San Jose State or, uh, you know, and then you found it compelling and then you Googled it later? Has anybody ever done that? A few, okay. Um, what about, has anybody ever went to a website like Fitbit as an example and did some research and then went to Amazon and, and bought it? Or so is, does anybody ever do that? Like go to the manufacturer site or 
some other site, but then actually buy the pro or even in person, right? You know, your local Best Buy to touch it and feel it, but then go to Amazon and purchase it. Does anybody do that? Okay. So where do you attribute the purchase to? Okay. If I'm, if I sell Logitech mouses or is it mice? I don't know. If I sell, let's just say headphones. If I sell Logitech headphones and I can sell, I can, I can, you know, users can sell, buy it on my website. They could buy it directly on Best Buy. They can buy it through Amazon. And you as the consumer go to all three places and then decide to buy on, you know, you know, on, on, on Amazon. Well, first of all, you know, uh, Logitech's never going to know that, that journey because you didn't purchase from them. But what if you saw an ad and maybe you, you searched it in Google and you clicked through on a, on a search ad, but then three weeks later, you just literally type Lenovo.com in, or, or excuse me, Logitech.com and buy the product. How do you think we need to attribute that purchase? Is it through search? Is it through just basically somebody knowing that they wanted to buy it and go to their website and then buy? So attribution, last, it's something's called last click attribution, meaning when you are responsible for managing sales on your, on your site, the only thing that you can really do at this point is attribute the last click. Meaning, was it through an ad on Facebook when you could have reached that person five different other ways? Was it through a search ad? Was it through a review on CNET? When you know a reviewer kind of unboxes your your mouse, excuse me, or your headphones, and then you know they they Google it later and buy. So what what? How do you do that? So that's been a big issue for the industry, and you know it still hasn't been figured out because people like I don't know about you, but back in the day I used to clear my cache all the time and like delete my cookies. Does anybody do that? Not a few maybe. I used to do it only because I thought it made my computer faster. <laughs> You know, that's, and, and I stopped doing it. So I don't, I don't do it anymore because it didn't, didn't help. So, um, but people do it for privacy reasons, you know, and so, or they have ad blocker on, you know, so they don't see the ads. So let's see here. A um, couple of other terms are remarketing and retargeting. I talked about that a little bit where, you know, you are, you know, in, in some of the platforms like Facebook, you can actually upload email addresses and like target people with email addresses. And let's say you have a, a you know, a, a newsletter and you have 500,000 subscribers to the newsletter that you send out every week. And then you upload the 500,000 users to Facebook and say, I want to target, retarget these people. Well, what the, what's going to happen is, is that basically Facebook is going to try to connect those email addresses that you've uploaded to the folks that have used the same email address to create their Facebook account. And, and usually there's a, between a 40, I guess it depends. And I don't remember what the latest stat is, but like 40 to 60% match rate. Meaning if you have a list of a hundred thousand people and you upload it to Facebook, well, your audience is going to be about, you know, if it's a hundred, if it's a thousand, you know, four to 600 people are going to, are going to be, be found because the email address that we use for newsletters might be our business email address. And the email address we use for Facebook or, or, or Instagram might be a personal address, right? So that's the, not a dilemma, but that's just the reality. And in order to remarket or retarget people, you would need that, that match match from, a, from, a, from one perspective. Another perspective is somebody goes to your website, you drop a pixel and, you can and they don't buy anything, you can retarget them later. Okay. So it's, it's all pixel based. It's not email focused. There's a lot of things you can do here and we can have an entire class on remarketing and retargeting, but that's kind of the gist of it. You're using technology to um, retarget individuals where they, has anybody ever actually had a conversation, didn't Google anything. And all of a sudden you're starting to see stuff in your Instagram feed uh, on stuff that you just talked about five minutes ago. Okay. That's insane. Right now, Honestly, I don't know how, how it works, but it has to be the phone, has to be, or my computer, you know, if I'm having a conversation in my office. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty good for now. Um, this is just some basic ads. I'm going to actually walk through those in a second. So let me stop sharing my screen for one second and ask if there are any questions while I pull up Facebook. Are there any questions? Um. I do have a question, but it's not about the lecture. It's just sure. a quick one. Um, 
I'm just on Canvas right now, and your class isn't popping up for me anymore. Really? Yeah. It disappeared as soon as your class started just now, because I, I tend to have Canvas open when I'm in classes. Click on courses, and, you, and it's not there, or are you looking yeah. at the assignment? No, the whole course got, like, removed from my Canvas. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not published. Oh, snap. Oh, I know why. Hold up. Hold up. What the heck happened? Give me a second. I, you know what I, I'm, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. When I was looking at the, the homework assignment or the quiz that I'm gonna share with you guys, I clicked unpublished and I thought I was I thought the quiz was unpublished and it is, but I think I did class course status. Hold on courses. There we go. My bad guys. It'll be published in a second. Okay. It should be if you want to refresh your browser. Okay. All right. Sharing my screen. Guys, take notes. Take notes on this. All right. <clears throat> right now I'm on the back end of, of Facebook. It's called Ads Manager. And there's something called Ads Manager and Business Manager. It's a little bit complicated. I'm not going to talk about it because it's – if you work at an agency and you're managing multiple businesses with different, you know, obviously your different payments and credit cards and all that, you need the business manager because it allows you to kind of manage multiple businesses within one account. Um, but this is the Facebook ads manager. And typically when you, when you create an ad, you, let me move this. There we go. You determine like what it is you want to do, right? What is your goal? What is your objective? Now we've talked about leads before, right? Who can tell me what a lead is? Like a interesting hook to get your customer's attention? No. A lead. Like if I, if I were, a lead is basically, at the end of the day, it's an email address. So if I, if I want to generate leads, I want to get email addresses because I want to be able to have my salespeople follow up on the lead. It's a sales lead, right? And you only, you, so if you're selling sneakers, you don't get leads, you just sell products. But if you sell software and data centers and all that stuff, you get leads because you don't necessarily buy software through um, a website, right? You don't like go to a shopping cart and click a million dollar piece of software and then, you know, go on with your day. So that's what that is. Google, it's, it's getting more leads. You can do promoting your page. There's a lot of things that you can do. Okay. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to click get more web visitors and hopefully they haven't changed this. I haven't been on the back end in quite some time. Okay. So right now it's basically because I'm logged in as, cause I have my own kind of like business unit and, uh, or my own business page rather. So it, it's basically giving me the option to, you know, it's already pre-populating my, um, my page, which is not the page I pay attention to, but on this description that I already put. Okay. So in this case, I want to actually, let me do this. I'm going to go to my other, hold on a second. So I do, my, my daughter, she plays um, club basketball. And uh, can you guys see that? And she plays for this organization called Top Flight. And so I help them um, basically with their, their ads and their content. And I have, not, not recently, but I used to do like, I used to buy all their ads and 
you know, and things like that. So um, I'm going to show you how I would do that through here because I think this is more relevant. So there's a couple of things here. We can, we can, th this is content already published on their website. This is a public post. Um, I can boost it, right? That, and that's like the easiest thing, right? You boost a post and you're good to go. Now, um, all of these things are customizable. So here's the ad on the right, right? So notice right here, it's like, congrats to so-and-so book now, right? So this, this probably isn't the greatest example, but I can change these things. Like if I don't want it to say book now, I can say learn more because maybe I am trying to get people to want to sign up to be a part of the club and play basketball, right? So notice the little call to action button down here changed when I changed the button. The, the URL is this. So this URL always has to match the landing page that you're driving traffic to because you don't want, like you can't like fool people to say, it's, it's a way to prevent spam. Cause if this said paypal.com, but then looks like somebody needs to get in. Hold on. Oh, I'm switching this to my phone. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. No problem. All right. So, um, okay. So anyway, I'm, I'm, basically promoting a post that already exists, right? So I'm kind of stuck with the, with the, the image. I can crop it if I want. Um, I can change, you know, some of the language here if I wanted to. So that is, where is that? They changed this up on me. Let me do that. Oh, I can't. Wow, I'm dumb. I'm super dumb. Okay. You can't change something that's already published, right? So we cannot actually make any adjustments here other than cropping the image. But what I wanted to show you was how you can target. So we're going to have, there's a lot of different ways to kind of build audiences. In this case, we're just going to build one on the fly. These are people that I, these are audiences that I've built in the past, right? For different clients and stuff like that. But let's say, for example, we click edit. Okay, so here now we're going to basically build our audience. Okay, so we know it's a local company. They're here in the Bay Area. And we know that, you know, in, in many cases, and this is the conversation that we had is, okay, are we going to target moms or dads? Let's target both. You know, how old do you think the parents are? Well, 18 to 65. What about locations? Okay, now this says United States and 25 mile radius. That's way too large, right? So what I would do here is I would type in, um, what's, what's the San Jose state zip code? Anybody know? 95112. Okay. So I'm going to do 95112. It's going to zoom in there and show me. Okay. So right now we were targeting everybody in the 95112 zip code plus a 25 mile radius. Okay. But let's say that's too, you know, we need to go bigger than that. So we could do something like just San Jose. And there you go. Now, I know because I know the business that they also have Stockton and Sacramento teams, but maybe it's a different ad. So we're not going to go that far outside of San Jose, but you know, San Mateo and, you know, close to Oakland or Hayward, that would be a good, you know, and maybe we need to just move it up a little bit to like that, right? Because we want to get as, reach as many people as possible. And, you know, parents who with kids who, who play basketball and club basketball are kind of obsessed. And so they will drive 60 miles to, you know, take their kid to a basketball game on a, on a, you know, Friday night at five o'clock. So we have, whoops. So our ad is basically we're targeting San Jose, 27 mile radius. We're going to scroll down here. Um, now we're going to select our, they've, they completely revamped this. So I'm like learning as I go again. So now they're going to give us options, right? So we can choose demographics. So this gives you like so much opera, like so many things. You can target people at different schools. So if you said, you know, I want to target people who went to San Jose State, like I can do that. Did you, San Jose State just pulled it. I can do that. I can, I can target majors. I can target grads, doctorates, whatever type of high school, college degree. That is op options, right? So in LinkedIn, if I am doing an ad and I want to target people, it's an ad to hire. And let's say I only want to target influence, um, engineers who graduated from Stanford and MIT. You could do that. Okay, so you can do it similarly here. Um, you can also do financial. So you can do income levels. 
So if you know that, you, you, you know, that maybe you're selling, you know, used Audis and you think that, you know, the target consumer is, you know, is making a more than hundred dollars a year. Well, you can target that person, right? So the more targeting you add, the more laser focused it'll be and the less expensive it'll be because your universe of people gets smaller, right? If you target the whole world, well, it's not effective, number one. Number two, it's going to be very expensive to reach the whole world. But if you target people and, and you add the attributes that are um, most relevant to them, then all of a sudden you can make not just a progress, but you can be very efficient with your ad spend. So you can do parents, you could do relationships, married, single, you know, in a relationship, out of relationship, in a relationship, you know. I remember when Facebook was a, a big, was big, you know, I would see like the same person, oh, I'm in a relationship. You know, later in the week, oh, I'm, you know, single. Next week, and, and like, who, who cares? Like, why do you do that? Anyway, so you can do employers and job titles. Now, a couple things about Facebook advertising is when the, with the 2016 election, they, and afterward with the, with the, the, the you know, the accusations of, of Russia kind of interfering and all the, like the targeting and ads that were apparently created by people in parts of, you know, Europe, they became very restricted in how you target, more importantly, the types of ads. So anything political goes through much more scrutiny than if you're targeting people for sneakers, you know? So um, actually, let me go back here. So now interest is interesting because you can self-select industries, right? Advertising, agriculture, you know, even within banking, there's online banking. I mean, there's hundreds of different things. There's families and relationships, you know, you know, there's food and drink. I mean, there's so many things. And if, you know, maybe you don't find what it is you're looking for. Maybe you just do sneakers. Maybe that's not a category. Well, I'm just going to select it. And there you go. So any person who's mentioned sneakers or shared a sneakers article, or, you know, those are people that I, I can target. It's not going to show me the person or the audience, but it'll, it'll tell me that it'll, it'll, it'll match that. So if I add, let's see, there we go. So here we have a couple things, right? We have demographics, people who work at Nike, people who are interested in Nike or Nike plus, which is a, a, a business unit of Nike or Nike football or Nike sports, where there's so many different Nike products and initiatives that it gives you the ability to target that specific. Um, you know, one of my favorite shoe companies back in the day was Diodora. Um, and again, not, not very many. They're not a huge, they're like soccer, I think soccer sneakers, but back in the day, we used to wear them for other things, but you can type in any, any words here that you want. And um, I'm going to show you something in a second. Um, they used to have the ability to, okay, sports. So let's choose sports. Let's choose baseball, basketball. Actually, you know what? We're actually building an ad. So let's do this. I'm sorry. Let's go back. And we're targeting parents, right? So let's do basketball. Interest, let's do um, student athlete. Let's do, um, I think AAU might be one. Yep, AAU basketball. Let's do um, NBA finals. Okay, so th those are just interest, right? Now, going to the demographics, we're looking for uh, parents, right? Because we're targeting parents. So let's just do parents all, but we can target parents with different age groups of kids. It's crazy how much Facebook information has on you, trust me, or on us. Um, and for those of you on, on Instagram, they have the same data on you as well. So we're going we're gonna to select all parents. We are going to, let's see, behaviors. What do we have here? Um, we don't care about politics. Let's do more categories. What do we have? Not a ton. Okay. Let's do financial income. Let's say for, because you know, we do know that AAU basketball is expensive. So we're going to do household income of the top 25 to 50%. We're going to do work. We could do employers, but let's not do that. Let's just do tech because we're surrounded by technology companies. So we'll do IT tech, management, sales, and business. Okay. 
All right. So here's our, basically our targeting people interested in basketball, student athletes, AAU, NBA finals. The demographics range from parents, top 25 of, of the, of, of income and the zip codes um, and working in the fields of IT management sales and what happened in business. Okay. Now, when you scroll down here, what this is going to tell you is the more defined your audience is, it'll be in the red. The more broad your audience is, it'll be in the green. Now, what do you see here? What did I just highlight? Potential reach. Exactly. So based on these parameters, I can potentially only reach a thousand people and that's bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Facebook ads manager, click on that. You saw, I just, cause remember I was on my Facebook page. I clicked promote ad. Now I'm going to go here and this is what I wanted to show you in the, the first time. So um, I'm going to create, create it. This is actually what I should have done, right? I'm going to click a saved audience and I'm going to go through this, the same exact process, but I want you to see something. Okay. Let's just call this basketball parents. Okay, we're gonna do San Jose. We'll do the radius of 25 miles is fine. Okay, we're gonna do 18 to 65. We're gonna do men, we're gonna do all. We're gonna do, let's say we just wanna target English. We wanna be as focused as we can. Okay, we're gonna add, now here's what I love about this because I can add basketball I'm going to type in girls basketball. I'm going to type in boys basketball. Okay. So they don't, there's no, no interest there, which is fine. Then I'm going to go suggestions. Now, based on these two parameters, it's going to basically give me additional examples, right? So women's basketball, let's choose that. Let's choose college basketball. Let's choose just basketball fields of study. Now, what I want you to pay attention to, so look at this, student athlete, job title. So people in their Facebook profiles will say, I'm a student athlete. Now, what happens when I scroll over these three different parameters that say student athlete? What do you notice on the right? Different titles, job title, Job titles, employers, and interest. Even more to that, more to the right of that. Oh, more to the, oh, the demographic, the size. The size, exactly. Blocking it, yeah. So this basically says is that two, based on just student athletes, there are t potentially 282,000 people with that as a job title. From an employer standpoint, 8,000. From an interest, people just interested, almost a million people. So we're going to select... I'm just going to select those two. Okay. Now look up here on the upper right hand corner. Now, what do you see up here in the, on the right? Higher reach. It, this is a breakdown of our, of, of our audience so far, right? Based on these parameters, we can potentially reach 790,000 people, right? So there's 790,000 people who live in San Jose with or within a 25 mile radius who are 18 to 65 who speak english who are interested in and are you know in these basketball interests and work in basketball or you know fields of study or job title okay so that's a pretty large audience now at this point i create saved audience and i'm done so there, there's my audience of basketball parents that i can use in any ad in the future Okay, so if I wanted to go here and let's see, that's not it. Go back here. Oh, here we go. Here's the audience where we're going to promote, right? So now instead of doing it all over again, I'm going to go down here and click cancel and then click saved audience here. Where is it? It's not showing up.
There we go. So when I click promote my ad, if I've already created my audience in the past, let's just say we went through that exercise weeks ago, I would just go here. I would choose promote this site or promote this post. I would click basketball parents. And there you go. Now, here's the beauty about this. Notice right here, it's going to give me a budget and people reached and estimated clicks. Now, if my budget was 10 bucks, I, I can expect to reach anywhere between 180 and 521 people. And I can expect anywhere between four and 17 clicks. What happens when I increase that to $10,000? Why is it not letting me do this? Oh, here we go, it's down here, okay. Why is it not letting me do this? I don't know. Oh, here we go, there we go. So I'm gonna change this to $10,000, okay? Now watch this, watch this number, these numbers up here where my mouse is. Now, for $10,000 over the course of five days, look at how much, how much that has increased. But that's a lot of money, right? So $100 isn't a lot, is it? I mean, depends. You know, even with just 100 bucks, right, we can potentially reach this many people in our target demographic, right? Now, if we're driving traffic to a registration page where we want to convert, you know, people to sign up for signups or for, you know, tryouts or sign up for, you know, to, you know, to play in the AAU club that's cost, you know, $1,000 every couple of months, then, then obviously you're going to want to invest a little bit more money to you know, reach them with a multitude of ads, right? And, and surround sound them with these content, okay? One other thing I forgot to forget, want to mention is placements, right? You can choose Instagram here. You can choose Facebook Messenger here. So you can do all of this from the Facebook backend. In this case, we're just promoting a post, but on the ads manager, when we create an ad this way, you can specify, you can upload creative, you can upload you know, you can type in your objective. I mean, you could do so much stuff on the ads manager or business manager. Um, it makes it very easier and easier to scale that. So um, I breeze through this. I think next week we might go through LinkedIn or I might go through this again. I'm going to spend some time next time uh, going through a scenario so that you guys have, we can see it more effectively. Any questions on kind of like targeting, paid media, definitions, I don't have it on that, but is this now what you just showed us? Is this software that you, your company has purchased? Or